On December 5th, 2019, two mysterious men snuck into the federal high court in Nigeria to arrest journalist and former presidential candidate Omoyele Shorore. Omoyele was arrested months prior for alleged treason because he was advocating for a protest against the Nigerian government under the hashtag Revolution Now. Revolution Now! He was also charged with other crimes such as money laundering and cyber stalking the president of Nigeria, despite no evidence of any of these happening. Omoyele spent months unlawfully detained even though the federal court had ordered his release. He was finally set free again to face the court, but an event transpired that prevented justice from being served. The mysterious men that had snuck into the building forcefully grabbed and arrested Omoyele while causing a major scene in a court of law. These mysterious men were operatives of the Department of State Services, also known as the DSS. This department is a security agency for the Nigerian government and has a long history of oppressive actions like those being done to Omoyele. Time after time again, the organization has been used by the government to abuse the human rights of the Nigerian citizens it's supposed to serve. The DSS isn't the first to do this though. Government agencies in Nigeria have a long history of violating the human rights of its citizens. You can see this in the DSS's predecessor, the National Security Organization of Nigeria. The NSO was created after the military head of state, Murtala Muhammad, was ambushed in his car and killed in a coup on February 13, 1976. Despite Murtala's death, the coup failed in overthrowing his regime and Olushegun Obasanjo took over as head of state for Nigeria. Oba Sanjo realized that the previous intelligence agency, which was just a special branch of the police department, wasn't enough because of its inability to detect the coup. So he created the NSO to take over as the primary intelligence and internal security agency. The NSO was made up of previous members of the previous agency and was under the control of the director general who would be appointed by the head of state. The NSO was relatively low profile during this time and primarily focused on protecting government officials and watching the military. That doesn't mean they weren't used to oppress the populace though. There are many examples of the organization being used to crack down on protests and detain dissenters. On October 1st, 1979, Obasanjo transitioned the Nigerian government from the military back to civilian control. Shehu Shigari was elected president of the new federal government of Nigeria and was given control of the NSO. The agency struggled to transition from an instrument used by the military to control people to a democratic organization with clear restrictions. Originally, Shehu appointed former police commissioner of Oyo State, Alhaji Shinkafi, as director general of the NSO. But he later resigned and was replaced with Mohamed Rafindadi. Mohamed, unlike the previous men who held the position, had a history in intelligence. He had been posted in places around the world like Ireland, Germany, and the UK when the special branch of the police department had still been in charge. Using this experience, Mohamed would become the NSO's most controversial director and bring the agency into infamy. On December 31st, 1983, a month after Muhammad's appointment, the civilian government was toppled once again. Military officer Muhammadu Buhari took over the government in a coup and kept Muhammad as director general of the NSO. The NSO was often in competition for supremacy with other military agencies within the government, but once the Buhari regime came into power, the agency was given unprecedented authority, which allowed it to end up on top of its rivalries with others. Buhari gave the NSO broad powers to the arrest and detention of anyone deemed to be a security risk to the government and the nation. This even meant that the NSO could arrest people who published material deemed to be embarrassing to the government. It is my pleasure, therefore, to declare today the launching day for the war against indiscipline. This resulted in journalists, opposition, and critics being repressed whenever practicing their free speech. Even famous Nigerian musician Fela Kuti would be detained for up to 25 months. In August 1985, Buhari and Muhammad's oppression of the masses would be eventually brought to an end with another coup led by Ibrahim Babaninga, or IBB for short. A huge justification IBB used for his coup was the reformation of the notorious NSO. After ousting Buhari and becoming head of state, IBB removed Mohamed Rafindadi as director general and held him under house arrest for 40 months. IBB also released 101 of the detainees from the NSO, including Fela Kuti. IBB's next course of action was to break apart the too powerful NSO. He divided the organization into three new agencies through the military decree called the National Securities Agency Act. The military decree created the NIA, DIA, and SSS to prevent one organization from centralizing power like the NSO was able to. Despite the reforms, one of the new agencies had quite a bit of continuity with the now defunct NSO. This would be the State Security Services, which many now know as the DSS. 
The DSS was given the responsibility of protecting government officials such as the president, but was also tasked with internal security and intelligence against internal security risks. The organization is placed directly under the control of the head of state though, so one man alone gets to determine what qualifies as the security threat. The DSS, as you may now know, is almost exactly like its predecessor. It imprisons dissenters and the opposition of the government, just as the NSO did before it. The DSS is given broad powers in the name of state security and is placed under the control of the head of state who appoints the organization's leader and minister. People like Omoyele live in fear of the DSS trying to kill them when trying to practice their fundamental human rights. This is especially the case under current president of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari, who had the NSO under his control following his orders when the organization was at its most notorious. Omoyele wasn't the first victim and certainly won't be the last. If the DSS continues to be used as a personal repression squad of the head of states like Buhari, then the rights of ordinary citizens and people trying to do the right thing will always be at risk.